today we're going to be speaking of something that most all of us have experienced, and that is when God is silent. <clears throat> when God is silent. Have you ever felt like uh, you have prayed and your prayers were not getting any further than the ceiling? Have you gone through a time in your life when it seemed as though uh, however you prayed or whatever was going on, God was just silent. He wasn't there. He wasn't present. Or maybe at that time when you felt far, far from the presence of God that He was judging you for past sins. Or maybe He was holding you accountable for a present sin in your life. And so as you went through this dark, dark time in your life, you wondered how can I approach God when I feel he is so far from me how can I enter into his courts how can I enter into his presence and um, maybe you've had a time in your life when he's been so silent for so long that you feel as though your very faith is shaken in God and we're going to look at some passages today that hopefully will be an encouragement to us uh, there's many, many places in the psalm that David says, Be not silent. And I'm like, well, we're going to look at some of those because David had that experience throughout his life where there was times when it seems that it seemed to him that God was silent, that he was not undertaking for him. But we know that uh, the overwhelming evidence is that in the Psalms that uh, God was very close to him and that David was a man after God's own heart he says in the seventh Psalm O Lord my God in thee do I put my trust save me from all them that persecute and deliver me but many of his Psalms are not where he he's feeling uh, and he's stressing that he feels that God is being silent and he's not answering his petitions he's not answering his prayers you know it's alright for the saint of God for the child of God to approach God and ask God where he's at in the 10th Psalm he says why standest thou afar off O Lord why hidest thou thyself in time of trouble so he's asking God, he's complaining to God uh, of the outrage of the wicked. And he's praying for a remedy here. He says, Why standest thou far off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in time of trouble? Is that the way that you may be feeling this morning, that God is standing afar off and he is hiding himself in the time that you're in most need of him? Uh, we can go on through and look in the um, 22nd Psalm my God my God why hast thou forsaken me even Jesus Christ when he was down here uh, was uh, forsaken by the Father and we know now why God turned his back God could not look upon sin Christ became sin for us but here this was David complaining in a great time of discouragement and distress my God my God why hast thou forsaken me why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my warring I cry in the daytime but thou hearest not in the night season and not and uh, you know uh, we all have had times when we felt like that God was far from us and that there was no remedy in sight. He says unto thee in the 28th Psalm, unto thee, O Lord, my rock, be not silent to me, lest if thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down in the pit. Hear the voice of my supplication when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands toward thy holy oracle. Um, you know, our faith we know our faith comes from God and we know that when we're praying to God that the very 
uh, uh, depths of our spirit, our soul, our heart, uh, are crying out for fellowship with our Creator. And um, in the midst of all of this silence and, and uh, uh, times of tribulation is when we need to seek His face the most. Not when we are on the mountaintop. It's easy to praise and glorify God's name when we're on the mountain, but when the valley is when we need to cry out for Him. And we need to seek His face. Now, when He's silent, uh, there's oftentimes reasons for His silence. Maybe it is a time of judgment on us, maybe it's a time of <coughs> testing to increase our faith and maybe also it's the time that God is proving us Job was proven we know that when everything was taken from Job here he was he had all the prosperity all the health and the wealth and the, and everybody's favor pretty much and uh, then God took it all away from him what was Job's response well in Job first chapter the 21st verse here was Job's response and Job said naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither the Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away blessed be the name of the Lord in all this Job sinned not nor charged God foolishly so we need to realize that when God is pouring out his blessings on us that's a wonderful time to give honor and thanks and praise to God but also when God withdraws his hand and when things aren't going the way that we think they should go and we're in time of distress that's the time when we should be crying out to God and we need to also say, not my will, but thy will be done. Naked I came into the world, the Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In the 55th Psalm, he says, Give ear to my heart. I mean, give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise. <laughs> Attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise. Sometimes that's about all we can do is make a noise. To mourn in, in our complaint and make a noise. Um, if we look over in the ninth chapter of Job, uh, we can see here that... Um, and, uh, Job is acknowledging God's justice and he's showing that it doesn't uh, man uh, should not be condemned for his afflictions at times these friends that were coming to him and, and condemning him and laying charge, false charges against Job saying that he had sinned and so on and here we see that in the 27th verse, Job says, If I say I will forget my complaint, I will leave off my heaviness and comfort myself. I am afraid of all my sorrows. I know that thou wilt not hold me innocent. If I be wicked, I shall be condemned. Why then labor I in vain? So, you know, sometimes it's okay to lay our complaints out to God. And, uh, you know, people say, well, you should never murmur or complain. Murmur not. Well, we see the Israelites murmured against God. But here we're talking about the soul seeking for respite, seeking for mercy and, and compassion, from realizing that we're just dust. So he says, David says in the 55th Psalm, Give ear to my prayer, O God. Hide not thyself from my supplications. Attend unto me and hear me when I mourn in my complaint and make a noise. 
My heart is sore pain within me, and the terrors of death are fallen on me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and horror hath overwhelmed me. And I said, Oh, that I had the wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest. Lo, then I would uh, fly away and be at rest. Lo, then I would wander far off and remain in the wilderness. Many, many times in the Psalms, David is asking that God would not be silent. And he's asking why God has cast him off. He says in the 60th Psalm, O God, thou hast cast us off, thou hast scattered us, thou hast been displeased. O turn thyself to us again. Thou hast made the earth to tremble, thou hast broken it. Heal the branches there, for it shaketh. Thou hast showed thy people hard things. Thou hast made us to drink the wine of astonishment. Thou hast given a banner to them that fear thee, that it may be displayed because of truth. And uh, so we, we see that, uh, but in all of these things, uh, we can look at <clears throat> as many psalms that is giving God the praise for hearing David as those that are uh, saying that God has been silent to him. In the uh, 74th Psalm, he says, O God, why hast thou cast us off forever? Why doth thine anger smoke against the sheep of thy pasture? He's speaking here to God's elect. He's speaking here to the to to those that 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 uh, are in great distress. That God that are His sheep. He says, "O God, why hast Thou cast us off forever? Why doth Thine anger smoke against the sheep of Thy pasture? Thy enemies roar in the midst of Thy congregations. They set up their ensigns for signs. Well." You know, sometimes we we do feel like we that God has been silent. Seventy seventh Psalm, He says, um, "I cried in the Lord with my voice, even in the, in the <clears throat> God with my voice, and He gave ear unto me." Sometimes uh, it's good for us to approach God and and um, in a way that is like a little in childlike. Uh, you know, sometimes it reminds me of a little baby. The baby doesn't know how to talk, but the baby sure knows how to tell a mother that 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 he's hungry, and he starts crying out, crying out, and the mother hears the baby, and the mother nourishes and feeds the baby, and that's exactly what we are. We are just little babies. Uh, in God's sight, we're and uh, we cry out for mercy. We cry out for help. The eighty-third Psalm says, "Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still." You know, keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. Um. In the 88th Psalm, he says, O Lord God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. Let my prayers come before thee. Incline thine ear unto my cry. For my soul is full of troubles, and my life draweth nigh into the grave. I am counted with them that go down in the pit. I am as a man that hath no strength. Thy wrath lieth hard upon me, and thou hast afflicted me with all thy waves, Selah. Thou hast put away mine acquaintances far from me. Thou hast made me an abomination of them. I am shut up and cannot come forth. Mine eye mourneth by reason of affliction. Lord, I have called daily unto thee. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. Lord, why castest thou off my soul? Why hidest thou thy face from me? I am afflicted and ready to die. 
from my youth, while I suffer thy terrors, I am distracted. Thy fierce wrath goeth over me. Thy terrors have cut me off. They came round about me daily like water that compassed me about together. Lover and friend hast thou put far from me, and my acquaintances into darkness. Well, he's definitely bearing his soul before his maker, isn't he? And um, he's saying, why are you being silent? Why are you not coming to my rescue? Why am I in this state of, of uh, distress and turmoil and travail of soul? In the 102nd Psalm, he says, Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thine ear unto me in the day when I call. Answer me speedily. Sometimes it seems like we may pray for something over and over and over and as if God is not even hearing us. It's just as if God is not even hearing us. Here in the 102nd Psalm, says my days are consumed like smoke and my bones are burned as a hearth my heart is smitten and withered like grass so I forget to eat my bread I am like a pelican of the wilderness I am like an owl of the desert I watch and am as a sparrow alone upon the housetop my enemies reproach me all the day and they that are mad against me are sworn against me because of thine indignation and thy wrath for thou hast lifted me up and cast me down my days are like a shadow that declines and I am withered like grass but after going through all those complaints he says but thou O Lord shall endure forever and thy remembrance unto all generations well we need to remind ourselves that we're not the only one that has have experienced the silence of God. We're not the only one that has been in a place of despair and persecution and felt like that we were alone in the world and felt like that everything was going against us. Um, there are these times that we go through in our lives that Frankly, sometimes that are beyond explanation. We under, we don't understand why God has allowed us to go through these things. And uh, we, why art thou cast down on oh my soul? Why art thou heavy? Uh, why why am I <clears throat> experiencing this ongoing silence from God? Why has it been such a long time? before I got some respite okay <clears throat> well when we go through those times we need to go back and be comforted by the the psalms that show that God has rescued David and the times when David has been most down and discouraged <clears throat> we see his way of approaching God and it's a way, it's, it's approaching God in the most honest way possible. Why art thou far from me, O my soul? Why art thou cast down from me? Why art thou silent from me? But then when we go back and we see the many times when uh, David is on the mountaintop and he's given honor and glory and praise for God he says in the seventh psalm, My defenses of God would stay with the upright in heart. O Lord my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute and deliver me. O Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy hands, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? And uh, he <clears throat> says uh, here, Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my God. 
Thou art my God. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. The lines are fallen on me in pleasant places. Yes, yea, I have a goodly heritage. <coughs> I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad. My glory rejoices. My flesh also so rest in hope. Well, so we all go through peaks and valleys. We also find that sometimes we're on the mountaintops and our heart is just swelling with the praise and, and thanksgiving for the things, that, the blessings that God has done for us. Um, and uh, we rejoice in the Lord and we praise Him for the great things that He has done. He says in the 34th Psalm, This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him and delivereth him. O oh, taste and see, the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. So there's many times where, Paul, where David is getting... Uh, answers to his prayers as, as there are times when he feels like God is silent. We need to remind our, ourselves of the many, many times that God has uh, imparted his spirit to us and comforted us and answered our prayers. The 46th Psalm says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time and, uh, in time of need present help in, time, in trouble therefore we will not fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea though the waters thereof roar and be troubled though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof Selah there is a river the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God the holy place of the tabernacles of the most high the Lord of hosts is with us the God of Jacob is our refuge Selah <clears throat> the Lord most high is terrible he is a great king over all the earth he shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet for God is the king of all the earth sing praises with understanding great is the Lord and greatly to be praised so David goes on and we see there that as many times as he felt that God is silent and is not listening to his petitions and his complaints, there's so many times when he says that in the 62nd Psalm he says, Truly my soul waiteth upon God, from him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. And um, so uh, I guess this morning I just wanted to take this time and if there are people out there that are going through great a time of of darkness maybe uh, sickness has attacked your body maybe you're very lonely and without friends maybe uh, you're financially you're destitute and it seems as though God has left you maybe uh, uh, you feel like you're going through a major major maybe you're being attacked by Satan well, just remember that Christ uh, went through, he says, in all points he was, he was afflicted as we were afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And by his stripes we are healed. And so for God's people, he has already uh, paid the price for us. And we have eternal life in His Son, Jesus Christ. 
and uh, he says I will never leave you or forsake you and so when it seems like that we ha- he has forsaken us uh, let us be reminded that he is there all the time God is never changing he's the same yesterday today and forever and he is in- immutable and uh, we we must also uh, cry out to him we must uh, in the midst of our suffering um, and our sorrow it's all right to t- to to say to God my soul is full of troubles and my life draweth nigh in the grave um, but at the same time we also need to find that sometimes we our souls can be lifted when we begin to praise God when we begin to count our blessings when we see how much he's actually done for us in the midst of our sorrows in the midst of our sufferings in the midst of disappointments in the midst of failures in the midst of when people turn their back on us um, we have the promises we have the promises in the 94th Psalm the Lord will not cast off his people neither will he forsake his inheritance and uh, and he uh, uh, sometimes when we begin to praise God we find that our spirits are lifted we find that he, in the midst of our discouragement all of a sudden we are we are brought to mind of all the great things that God has done for us in the past and uh, the many times he's rescued us and the many times he's preserved our lives many times that he's poured out blessings innumerable that we could not mention the 107th Psalm says oh give thanks unto the Lord for he is good for his mercy endureth forever let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them out of their distresses and he led them forth by night by the right way that they might go to the city of habitation oh that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men I'm reading in the 107th Psalm he brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands in sunder oh that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble and he saveth them out of their distresses he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction oh that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men he maketh the storm a calm so that the waves thereof are still let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders he turneth rivers into a wilderness and water springs into dry ground the righteous shall see it and rejoice so we when we are going through those times when it seems as though God is silent when it seems as though God is not in our lives when it seems as though he has removed himself and his presence from us sometimes we need to praise God when we don't even feel like praising God sometimes that's when we need to praise him the most is when we don't feel like praising him but it's all right also to cry out and and our complaints to God it's it's okay to uh, seek his face and to let him know that our hearts are distraught and he says um, I cried unto the Lord my voice with my voice with my voice Lord did I make my supplications I poured out my complaint before him I showed him my trouble when my spirit was overwhelmed within me then thou knewest my path and the way wherein I walked have they privately laid a stair for me 
I cried unto thee, O Lord, and I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplication. In thy faithfulness answer me, and in thy righteousness. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of righteousness. Deliver me, O Lord, from mine enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the, the way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. Hear me speedily, O Lord, my spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down in the pit. Teach me to do thy will. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake, for thy righteousness' sake. Bring my soul out of trouble. Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Um, I will extol thee, O my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchableness. I will speak of the glorious honor of the majesty and of thy wondrous works. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion and slow to anger and of great mercy. Well, <clears throat> then we'll end this thought with the fact that uh, the praise of God from the lips of his people is something that he loves. When we begin to praise God, we find that our spirits are lifted. We find that um, he takes pleasure in the praise of his people. And he takes, uh, he takes great joy in those that praise him. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto God while I have my any being. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, which made heaven and earth, the sea and all therein, which keepeth truth forever, which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry, the Lord looseth the prisoners. The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. The Lord raiseth them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and the widow. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto God, for it is pleasant and praise is comely. Great is our God, and of great power is his understanding is infinite. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praise upon the harp unto our God. He giveth to the beast his food and to the young ravens which cry. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him in those that hope in his mercy. And so... Today we need to remember that when we go through times where it appears that God is silent and he's withdrawn himself from us, uh, we can pour out our complaints to him, we can cry out to him, and we can praise him. And we can um, uh, when we begin to praise him, we uh, we will find that our souls will be restored to communion and fellowship with Him. We may not be getting everything that we think we should uh, have as far as materialistic things, or maybe uh, our health is not the way that we would like for it to be, or maybe our friends are not responding to us the way we think they should respond, or maybe um, people are not understanding of us. But God understands and knows the very intents and motives of our heart. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the hope and comfort it gives to us. 
when you appear to be silent in our lives, when you allow us to go through things that we don't understand, why we would have to go through maybe months and months without an answer, and then it seems like sometimes we go through our lives and and uh, it seems like everything's going wrong, and then all of a sudden something will happen that will totally cause us to wonder about why would you allow this to happen in our lives. We know that your word is true. And you said all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are those that are called according to your purpose. It doesn't mean all things are good, but all things do work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to your purpose. And so we're glad to know that this morning. We ask that you would um, continue to be with us, guide us, and direct us, and uh, restore unto us the joy of your salvation. And we ask these things in your name and for your glory. Amen.